The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman here on this Friday, very ugly Friday. Dow's down 710. This is the Tiger Technician's Hour. Let's go through what we. we need to right now we're looking at the dreaded h pattern what is the dreaded h pattern uh i should have suspected that once we broke that support yesterday at 22,509, that there would be a follow-through to the downside doesn't mean to say we have to close horribly although right now it looks horrible and we're going to see if we have a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside today uh, most importantly let me just show you the pattern that i'm looking at here <clears throat> this is called the dreaded h pattern why because you can see in each of these arch formations that looks like a lowercase h straight down tries to rally fails at either a peak a or a peak b and pulls back and takes out the left side low that arch formation says looking like a lowercase h that if it takes that left side out got to be really careful and we've seen that we actually saw it many times in the one and two minute charts early this morning look you can see this in the e-mini <clears throat> look how many times it's happened so let's just go to the two minute chart. Well, we can go to the one minute chart. Uh, one minute chart. Look how many times. Look at all these H patterns B minus, A minus, uh, A minus, A, B goes to all the way to a doji C and then it pulls back. Each one of these is the arch formation. And we're going to see if there's another one now at 39 or 15 in the E mini. Let's get back to our story. What we're looking at Technical Friday. <clears throat> so let's do some of this on a purely technical basis. The technicals were fabulous all the way through until about three days ago. Look, the MACD was strong. Not as strong as it was before, but very strong. Stochastic was flat at 86%, uh, actually almost 90%, and flat, very good. So invariably, when you get a smash to the downside like, side like this, it's usually part of an economic report that just wax the market because the technical side said it should hold and it should hold maybe just a little underneath this nine period moving average instead it plunged through and now you can see it's got an s and that s is for sell we finally crossed negative so quickly from the nine going uh, above the 14 to the nine going below the 14 period moving average that's number one that's the daily chart the magd has just turned negative it was so spectacularly positive just the other day, the stochastic holding beautifully. Now it's down to 75 percent, below the 80 percent threshold. On balance volumes have been fading miserably, and the relative strength is still pretty good. So this is a news-related two days of, of consecutive news. Yesterday was the uh, what was it? The jobs report was a little too high, and today, of course, the C, the uh, consumer price index uh, being high. Mm, that's all it needed. There was just a chance then maybe the consumer report uh, was just a little bit better than anticipated because it was announced that it would be bad, especially when the administration says that. Then, you, then you're then you expecting maybe it's a kind of a, 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 a preamble to, to the actual announcement and preempt that whole aspect of the, of the negativity. Nah, it was bad enough for the market just to cap down. And we've got a, we're only half an hour, 35 minutes, 40 minutes into the trading day. We've already got a Mirabosa candle. No wicks, gaps down and goes to the low of the day right now, down 762 at 31,510 in the Dow. You've got exactly this. And you can see the weekly chart, nine period moving average, pink was so close to getting near the 14 period moving average as a positive and now it's, it's deflected lower not good it's stuck in a trading band to the downside a down channel we're looking at the s p and this particular instance the s p has a peak c probably going to go to a c minus at 41.77 after a really i mean 3810 to 41.77 that is really a good move to the upside and now look at this, giving back such a big chunk of it. And the weekly chart didn't even get to the 14 period moving average. It looks terrible. And that monthly chart still is within the candle of last month. Um, a long-legged wick uh, to the upside and downside. 
Ugh, we're into the middle of it. You remember my rule of thumb? In this particular pattern, when you go halfway into the wick, uh, that's a not a good sign because if you go there in a shorter time period, in this case, it'll be a daily chart, there's a really good chance that you're going to retest that low of 38.10.32 that was made back on the, uh, I should get the date exact. The date was the 20th. Yep, May the 20th. Uh, let's go on QQQ. One of the reasons why for subscribers to Mobile and Call, this is one of the highest cash positions we've had in years. And I, I think we're getting really close to being to finding some stocks. We had one today that's pulling back sharply as I anticipated, but it is a very nice chart formation. It's in the whole construction area, but it's really to do with infrastructure. Uh, there, there are stocks that I'm liking, but I had mentioned one before that had done very well, and I wasn't sure if it was going to be an alternate count or whether I should just take the count as a peak, a B. But I'm calling this a peak F slash B with a doji candle high in IBM, having done beautifully from 125 to the 144 area uh, in just uh, two, three weeks. And now it's given back almost half. So I'm just going to have to suggest that the week, the daily chart has got a doji candle high that is not a, a brand new peak B, but an old peak F. Because on the low that was made at 125.80, it didn't break a key support level of um, the 13th of April low of 124.91. So with that said, that's saying that the, the weekly chart is still pretty positive, but it could pull back sharper after the cup formation, left side, right side price time match, a little late and just under the 145's target. And the monthly chart is still not bad. So there are stocks that are saying, keep an eye on us. We've had huge multi-year, decade, in fact, in some cases, in IBM's case, um, consolidations. And we are ready, but we, we have to be ready with the market. And one that I did like, but I haven't got any position, but I, I did like it because I liked what was going on. But I needed to wait until early next week to say, what is it doing is salesforce.com. 3.11.25 was the high in, in, in November, plunges down to the double bottom at 154, rallies back up to the 193 area, and here it is at 178. Is this just saying to me, I don't have enough strength, I can't get out of the down channel of the weekly chart, but I want there are certain stocks I want to keep my eye on for this particular phase, but we will go in very slowly. A question, hi Basil, do you, do the indices need to be flushed out since they were going up with different peaks? Uh, the rut was an E in industrials, the Dow was up and an A, S B was a C, and need to, to be more orderly. In a, in a sense, you've nailed it, that's absolutely true. The rotation that I've been talking about is the same rotation, rotation we're talking about in the, when I look at tops, tops are usually alternate you remember March of 2000 uh, was the S&P, but January had already seen the top in the Dow. And we've seen tops like that most of the time when tops are very coincidental, very close together, then it's a shorter term sharp pullback. But when they rotate and that means they come down, they form their own highs and their own rhythm. But when they make lows, they make lows in unison, like the March of so I'm going to answer that question. Great that question. Put back in a moment. Dow's down 750. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So just, yes, in terms of that question, uh, double I, that's, that's a really good question. But when you're in a retracement to the upside, after a low that, as I said before, it's a low. I don't see this as the low at all, the, the 20th of May low, even though it was a coincident low. Uh, there are just too many signs that say that the work needs to, one of the reasons why we've raised cash and, and, and got one of the biggest cash positions we've ever had for subscribers to my opening call, is that I believe that this is going to be a refresh and that when we make a, a really substantial low in the market, we're going to be, we want cash because there are going to be so many positions I, you won't have enough money to put in when you finally say, this is the law, I want to put money to work. And even then, you don't have to put it all in one shot. So yes, in this particular arch formation, the dreaded H pattern, it's the arch itself that is really uh, significant. The only reason why I was anticipating that if there was a Chapman Wave stalk leg formation in that 32,509 low wasn't taken out, we could have a pop to the upside. But even then, I'd say that 39,900 level with the 200 period moving averages, that's going to be really tough to break. So it was more looking at trades to the upside. And I, I will still continue to do that. But I think we're getting closer and closer to some sectors at least starting to find some kind of support. And we're going to have to be very selective there. Look, you can't even con – uh, so let me just finish this up. So the Dow, yes, went to peak A. The S&P went to – right here, peak C. Uh, but they all have the same, uh, the same rebound pattern – that it wasn't a huge move. The biggest move would have been if the S&P could get uh, halfway to two-thirds from the low that was made at 38.10 on the 20th to the high that was made April the 21st, which is in the 45.12 area. I mean, that that would that means that we'd have to break the 200 period moving average of 43.13. So these are rebounds that can fail. So there's a very big, big difference between getting a major buy signal that says, absolutely, we should get peak D and even recycle to a second D. This, that's different. And that's the reason why I've been trying to, to, to be so cautious about it. Look, the QQQs, um, could it make a, a double bottom here like um, uh, head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders with the low of the, around about the 12th of May, then the low of 280.21 on the 20th 
and then a low somewhere here in the 289 to 286 area, and then another big arch formation. Yes, it's a possibility. Uh, one of the reasons why I didn't want, I, I didn't, I decided I wouldn't grab the short position. What I should have done, should have, could have, would have, but it wasn't my thinking. But I just, I didn't expect it yesterday that the move down would become so accelerated and, and go through that um, uh, 22,509 level, 22,509 level. Because what I normally would have said if I was thinking, uh, thinking it through to say, wow, we are so vulnerable here, anything can happen. I would have said, grab the DOG one to one short uh, if we trade underneath. Uh, 22,509 and let's just deal with it from there and instead uh, and then you would have been in a nice position so this is what I'm looking at and if you look at look all of them the XLK went to a peak B and it could be the second B minus here as it fails as the S&P select spider fund yesterday you remember on my show I said it's kind of holding but Anissa and I gave those levels to watch on the left side I said if it takes out these levels You've got to be careful. Okay, here's the other one. The SMH has led us on the way up and down for decades. Now it's really leading us on the way down. Look at this, down 7 at 225.30. So that's a big issue and a big problem because you need the semi Remember, the semiconductors are the equivalent of USO of the oil uh, for all the decades and 100 and more years where oil has just been a predominant um, part of the equation for the U.S. economy, for the world economy. It still is, although it's down at 61 cents. The uh, uh, USO is down at 90.46 at a peak D in the daily. Is this going to be an alternate account, E slash C in the weekly and a leg E in the monthly? All I can say is a high-level consolidation if there's any consolidation at all. But look at crude oil. Crude oil is a little different. Pulling back 34 cents yet, 121.18, just stuck 123.18 on the continuous contract underneath the 125.83 level. And I said, remember, this is the pattern, the rectangle pattern, the Chapman wave that forms a lopsided cup formation. They can go to just under, right on, or just above the previous flagpole high. That's 125.83. Let me just double check. They haven't smoothed this out, changed the price. Uh, everything else is correct, maybe. Yep, 183, 125.83. And we'll be watching this very closely. And it says, even if there's a high level consolidation, it could be a lot. It could be 20, 20 points down, but it's still in a high level. So I'm looking at this and saying, we don't want to over anticipate anything, but you do want to over anticipate cautiousness because that's absolutely key here. UVX higher, thank you. Let me look at that. UVX high. Hope to uh, uh, Tarakoka, you played that. Oh, look at that. Big gap up at 14.72, up $1.17, up 8.5%. Don't forget, folks, you know, it's fascinating because we've got Tom O'Brien, I'm sure he's having a ball at this particular period, uh, uh, this kind of market, talking about all the different techniques and how he uses volume, volume comes in, volume goes out, how you can use the different uh, vertical aspects of how you measure what happened previously. I like to do that using both on balance volume, but also using the technicals of the MACD and stochastic. So it should be a fabulous webinar going on right now as we speak. So the UVXY up against resistance here, 1473, breaks that. 15 is the 50 period exponential moving average, uh, next resistance on the way up. And the VIX itself, so this the UVXY, which is the pro shares ultra uh, short, the VIX index is up 8.56. The VIX itself is up 11% at 28.96. What a big breakout. And now you can see what I like to do. I join these lines. Uh, it's so easy to do. You just take the line, you extend it to the right, take the line, extend it to the right, and you can see that this is going closer. Look at that. Closer and closer to the um, uh, Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone, and that's going to be really important. Held beautifully, the 200-period moving average of 24s. I've been talking about it for uh, two weeks now, and all of a sudden it's going from 24 to 28.97, the high of the day. I wouldn't be messing around. That's the reason why I've, I felt absolutely it was incumbent upon me to, as much as possible, get cash for subscribers. Uh, we're going to have um, 
We're going to have our choices, but we will still treat them at the beginning right now in this phase from next week, I believe is, is another phase we're looking at. And we'll still treat them as shorter term trades in the beginning to see if they can get some uh, traction. Now, looking at the, um, so yes, HYG, a lot of talk about HYG uh, over the last few days. This is the junk bonds, iShares, iBox, dollar, high yield, corporate bond ETF. Wow, corporate bond ETF goes to a leg F in the week, weekly chart. Just um, a couple of months ago, it was up in the 80s. And here it is at 75.72 down at dollar twenty-three. Single leg eight to the upside. Junk bonds. Wow, look at junk. Yes, sweet. That is junk bonds. Uh, this is the Eiffel Tower. Straight up, straight up, uppercase A pattern. And now we've taken out the left side. This is like a very sharp uh, journey day. I'll be right back. Dow's down 773. And this is down. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, I wanted to show you, uh, it did go, uh, there was a brief moment where, look at this long rectangle for me. It doesn't look like it now, but look at this from 7.30 this morning on the 10th at 7.37, all the way to just as the news broke at 8.31, look, narrow, narrow range, and then kaboom. And now look at this. This is one of the techniques I like to show subscribers. Uh, sometimes a little difficult to uh, do when you're in the middle of the move because you say, oh, man, now it's ready to turn. But look at this pink. When the nine period goes under the 14 period moving average, it's been pink ever since 8.31 this morning. There was just brief three bars, four bars, of green at 9.46 when it went to 39.52 on the E-mini, and then uh, at 9.50, 
it was back to pink and it's been pink ever since and now what you got is a, the MACD rallying the stochastic making a higher high and this is the first time there's a, there's a chance you could get you could get another green in the one I'm doing one minute chart folks so don't get too carried away the green it could go green and have a bit of a bounce uh, very also so uh, GT uh, sends a, uh, an email saying uh, a crash uh, S&P where was it where was it uh the HYG and then a crash for the ES. I think this is very different. I think this is insidious. The, we, we had the test. Yesterday was really the test. Today's the follow through. And I suspect that what we're looking at here is something very different. We, we're not going to get crashes. Maybe at the very final, when we get that final uh, kind of waterfall cascade, the last 15 or 20 percent in a, in, a, in a daily chart that just really collapses to the low and then we make that v-shaped turnaround that's going to be different so the reason that i'm saying that is that if you're looking at i don't think you get a crash when you've seen so many stocks first of all under the 200 period moving average and when you've seen so many stocks have 60 70 80 and even 90 percent corrections i i think what happens is you just see an insidious series of low lows and lower highs until eventually just there's, there's no one left to, to buy. And that's when you get a most fabulous buying opportunity, uh, a, a cycle that says this is now just not just a short term. This is one that can really last. That's number one. Number two is the whole idea of new highs in 2022. I've been saying for so long that when you think of all the news that's happened up until now, the monthly chart of the S&P, has held unbelievably. 4818.62 was the high, 3810 was the low, uh, 700 points in the S&P. That sounds like a lot, but actually it's going from 2191 in March of 2020 to the 4818 level. So this is just, so far it's only about a third, let me do it by eye. Uh, yeah, maybe more than about, about two thirds. Um, two thirds, from the bottom, I I think that what we're looking at here is, as we get into the to the later part of June, maybe early July, that's where we get the real test. Do we get a very oversold? I think we're going to see a series of these oversold lows, and they just give you give you a, a breather to the upside. I was hoping that this breather was the one where you could really get, we would get aggressively short. And I missed the opportunity yesterday because the moment we took out the low of 22,509, that was the ideal time to see how we how deep we can go in this, maybe too early next week until we get very oversold. And then we get another rally. Do we make another rally that says the S&P makes a lower high below the 4177 high of two weeks ago? Um, and then we make a lower low yet. Is that what we're looking at? A series and series of series of lower highs and lower lows. I think that's a much greater chance than looking at um, a crash. The, the, everything about whatever I'm looking at here does just not signal. Let me just do this. I'll do it for my subscribers. I I think I can do it tomorrow. I'm, I'm hoping I can. Uh, my my market overview. If I don't do it tomorrow, I'll do it on Sunday. And on Monday, I will be uh, doing my show 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock Uh Grandson is going to uh, be graduating from middle school. Probably graduated really well from skating, um, sk uh, skating school. But uh, yeah, uh, so uh, we're going to be, be there in New York for a few days. So I'll be uh, uh, Tuesday. I will not do my show at all. Uh, Wednesday I might be able to do it remotely. I'll see. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, you can see what I'm looking at. Look. The iShares, the wood iShares Global and Timber Forestry ETF. You see this long rectangle. You remember I spoke about the Chapman Wave oval pattern? Well, there's something else. And uh, General Lyon asked me a couple of days ago, how long can you go in a stalk formation going sideways? And I said, we're just about done. That was Thursday. I said, we're just about done. It's uh, by, by within two days. We should be finished this and breaking one way or the other. Well, the other pattern, that, and now that's negated, but the other pattern that isn't negated is this very long rectangle that says you can go sideways 
if you don't break out significantly back to the upside, but instead break to the downside, which the Wood iShares Global and Timber Forestry ETF is finally doing, now you can get yourself a one-to-one. -one. I'm always very conservative. So 98.98 .98 was the all-time high. And I'll just be, I, I'll kind of go to this area right here, 98 down to 80, 83. So that's, so let's call it 15 points. I will take 15 points from the high of the week of the 14th, the weekly chart, 14th of January at 95. So that takes you down to 80. And where are we right now? We're at 81. So that would be my first one-to-one -one from there. Oh, it's already done that once. So if that gets broken, then I can then I lower it and I take either a moving average or a gap or a tiny doji candle and I'll make a measured move. And that probably would take me down to 79 next. So 81, 58 right now. Look at the turnaround in the HYG, HGX, that's the Philadelphia Housing Index. I'm uh, making the dreaded H yet again over there. If it takes out, it doesn't have to close under, but just takes out the low of uh, 372.96 is a 387.81 right now. Uh, yeah, 387.00. Um, if it takes that out, that says lower lows and lower highs for the uh, Philadelphia Housing Index. And look at the yields. The yields almost 3.277. 32.77 for the um, TYX, that is the, right there, that is the 32, oh, 32.02. Wait a minute, let's just get that right. There it is. 32.02. Oh, that gets smooth. No, 32.77, there it is. So 32.77, and what we're looking at here is we're at 31.96. So we are so close in the in the 30 year yield going uh, upside. So this is something to keep in mind. Now this is something I want to bring up at this particular point. Remember I said, are we matching in this phase right here? Are we matching this phase right here? Now I have to say there's a, there's a chance that maybe not. So a lot depends. The month is not even half over. Uh, so the 10th we've still got to go to the 30th. Uh, what is June? 30th, yes, that is two, uh, Thursday the 30th. So let's see what happens by the end of the month. But I suspect that on a very short-term basis, um, we are becoming quite oversold and that they could, and that's what I'm saying. I don't think crash, I think a series of deep corrections with lower highs and lower lows until we make some kind of a bottom. I must say, but just on a purely technical basis, I think we're getting closer and closer to making some kind of a bottom that is way more tradable than just these two, three week uh, rallies. Uh, but I, we have to wait. I don't, I don't want to be impatient. We'll get the Dow's down. Ooh, come back a little bit. Down 690. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, uh, so A couple of cool questions came in. I, I, I've got the uh, stock list. You know, I don't know what a stock list does right now. Almost everything is going down. But let's just do this on a purely technical basis. So a couple of questions. One, one I'll go backwards. Um, uh, Basil, thoughts on these dreaded H's? The dreaded H, remember that's that straight line down, and then you make an arch formation and it's faded to peak A or B, and you go to a lower low and hold uh, below the left side low, and then it can do another one. Uh, keep doing that. So actually turning into successful tests that hold, what would be your sign? So the sign is usually a cup formation. What happens is you get your H and then you start to move higher. But there's a whole but there are a bunch of technicals that I look at. For instance, you see the way the MACDs rallied so sharply, and you see that there's nothing here in the in the price. It hasn't moved commensurate with the move. If I was looking at this and I didn't see the price, and you said to me, there's a stock that's trading at 10. We've just moved up in the stochastic from minus whatever it is to positive. Um, in, in the MACD and the stochastics holding above 80%, where do you think it would be? I would say, oh, man, if it was a 10, I wouldn't be surprised if, if it's moved up three points to 13 in this particular instance. Well, you haven't seen that. So what you need to see, preferably I want to see it from a low in the MACD crossing positive and a stochastic because if it starts from a high, then you have to have a catch-up in the price very quickly before it fails. So you would see the S&P now at 39, 14, uh, 50. You would see it very quickly. You see this trend line that I drew, Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. It says by about, uh, where, what are we in now? We're at uh, 10.44 a.m. Eastern time. It says that, a, oh no, that's even, I'm, I'm being too generous. I'm going to have to lower this. It says, and it will take even more time. It says that by um, in the next 10, 15 minutes, it should try for 39.24, and here we are at 39.15, five points higher. It could do it because it's holding the nine. Look, remember I said to you, look how the pink nine period moving average has been so negative. There was just this brief four-minute run with a green. Now we've had this green. Now this is way more positive. So this is exactly the sign that you look for. The test on the left had very negative uh, um, implications right here. Right here at this particular low. Look, the stochastic was way down there, and the MACD was, hasn't yet crossed positive. Now, when I do the vertical test at that peak B, look, the... Uh, MACD has rallied. You haven't got price movements. So it needs to catch up very quickly. But the stochastic holding over 80%, that's what you want to see. The on balance volume is still very weak. But look, the gray relative strength is moving nicely. So, oh, this has gone to a leg C as I'm talking here. So it's gone to a C. And look at the space. Now you want to see shorter time span. Look at the space between the A and it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 bars before it makes a peak a B. Then it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 bars. So far, 9 bars. 
for a peak C. Uh, we'll see. There's another 30 seconds or something to go. What is it? Uh, one minute chances. Uh, oh, nine seconds to go or something. So that's good. If it pops up, this still remains C. If it can just pop up a little bit. Come on, come on. Let's go. you got three seconds or four seconds to go. Otherwise, you're making a peak. Oh, you made a peak. So that is peak C, 3922.75. Now, you've already got to a peak C. And that says, wow. You've got about another 10 minutes to go for that leg C, to, which is at a peak C, to become a – and you want speed. Now you have to contract. The, 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 the space between the rest period and the peak has to be way shorter. In fact, in the next two minutes, you've got to be above uh, 39.22.75. Of course, we're talking about the one-minute chart, but everything here applies to the same thing in the day. I'm suspecting that intraday we can have a really nice rally, maybe to the 342 level. And if it can hold there for more than um, 12 or 15 minutes, a good chance of hitting 39.52. And then we get the story. Do we sell into the close for the weekend or not? Next question we've got here is the SCO. Well, the SCO is the short, two times short, I believe, the oil. Well, I looked at that this morning. I thought, I'm ready to do this, but I don't want to, I don't want to take any gambles on stuff that really, uh, the tr I, don't, I don't want to fight the trend. So crude oil now is down 232 at 119.22. But SCO, Duffy, yes, absolutely. This is the one that was going to be my trade of the day. And I thought, you know, so much going on. Don't be a hero. You can't do that. So here we are up. 83 cents at 19.14. The SCO is doing very nicely. 1952 is the pink nine period moving average, which is way under the 20.26 14 period moving average. So this is a start to say, and this is what I was thinking. What if we suddenly get crude oil acting really weak into uh, Tuesday, not just Sunday night, Monday, but into Tuesday? What if we get the DBA, which is the um, DBA Agricultural Fund, which we've been long since the 13s, taking a few bits off and it hit 20, uh, just on 23, and now it's at 21.96. Uh, I think this is taking a digestive phase. So that says to me, uh, you've got to be careful. Look, if I go to wheat, does wheat, um, peak C, look, I see this is a peak C, but everything about it says to me, it looks like a D, well, it has gone from the, uh, 1280 level down to 1057 right now and look at the failure pattern in the weekly i think that i think the grains yes um grain the soybeans continuous contract at a peak d if there's no new high today looks very much like uh, crude oil it's pulling back 17 and a quarter at 1751 i think this could pull back look at khan uh, thinking of Tom O'Brien right now, right now, where he says Khan. That's the 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 the, the Boston uh, accent. Uh, we're down five at seven sixty seven. It's kind of stalling here. Soybeans. This is all part of the contract. The DBA, the agriculture. Look at that sharp pullback in soybeans. Oh, sugar. I'm sorry, sugar continuous contract. So there's a chance we actually start to see an amelioration of the inflationary aspect. And the market likes that. And then later on, we find out, oh, no, it was just transitory. Actually, the only thing transitory now are the uh, slight pullbacks that we get in the commodities because most of we're getting to higher highs. So that would help. I think that's really kind of what I'm looking at as the chance to do that, to, to, to have uh, another one of those rallies, but a counter trend rally. So next question I had was, where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Um, Square. Square is making the dreaded H, made a peak C, stuck in the rectangle formation at the bottom, which says you could go towards, right on or just below the uh, previous low of 65.10 on the 12th of May. This is Square Block, formerly Square Point of Sales Software Mining. Uh, uh, it helps manage receipts. Oh, this looks terrible. Down five at 71. Uh, there's your dreaded H pattern. So we, we, we're just not seeing any relief. Uh, let me look at travelers. I just wanted to go to one of our uh, Dow stocks, uh, TVL, travelers, TVR, TVR, tra TRV, <laughs> one of those days. TRV made a peak B, failure, dreaded H pattern. So even in the insurance, what about true? 
uh, Prudential, uh, Dreaded H, all of them, everywhere you look, you've got these Dreaded H's. On a very short term basis, it looks to me, let's see if you've got our leg deep. Yeah, nope, not yet. Oh, we got a PC1, C2, is that okay? I'll be back in a moment. Tell me, we're going to rock the Nope, I'll just be in there right now. Now I can extend the Sharpening floor. your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So just let me correct something here. Yeah, that actually turned out to be a key E in the one-minute chart. I missed one. It was my, I was busy talking and I didn't see it. So this is peak E, and in the time constraint from the left side to the right side to the low that was made that doji candle at about 10.24, we've used up so much time. You remember what I said? I don't like it when the MACD takes all this time and rallies so sharply without the price movement. Because remember, the MACD essentially, look at the green line. That almost always, look at the green line. That almost always outlines your price movement. That's the nine period differential. So um, in this particular case, it used up so much energy and it couldn't get. It did make the cup of the bowl formation, but it hasn't broken out. At this particular point, uh, maybe you can still do it in the next few minutes, but you, you've run out of time to get to at least the uh, up-channel wedge resistance level 39.29. We have 39.21. So quickly, let me do this because a quick question came in. Uh, what about the rest of the month? I think the rest of the month says... We're getting extremely oversold. 
there are some stocks that look like they're going to be test, real test cases to say, are these the areas you want to be in for any rebound and then just take your money, just you have a nice move, 5 3% to 7% up, maybe more, and then take your money off and you keep doing that. At this point, I don't see anything that I want to hold longer term. No, CRM, uh, yes, I, I sorry, CRM, uh, Salesforce.com, uh, still needs quite a lot of work. Today's weakness says it needs work, but it might be one of those. But just keep your eye on some that you really like. And then the idea is don't think you're going to make up all the money that if for anyone who's lost money, you're going to make it up in one shot. Just put a little bit of money to work. And if it works, that's great. Build up a kitty. Don't build up a minus kitty. Build up a big, if you want to have a cushion for the next big major buy signal. Um, so what I am looking at here is uh, the Dow is down 683. How we close today it really dictates a lot of whether we have a, a good oversold bounce on Monday, Tuesday, going into the end of next week, or whether we just keep making lower lows and lower highs. At this particular point, just raise cash. Be careful. It's the best thing to do. Stay tuned to Larry Pizzo. A 